All right. We are live. Another episode of Monero Talk, uh, a Saturday morning edition. We are communicating uh, with a few gentlemen over in Italy who are working on an interesting project. Uh, we have Vincenzo, uh, Di Nicola, uh, Colo uh, Cologio, and Raphael. Um, uh, recently, I believe Vincenzo had posted on Reddit or uh, it was it was quoted in an article that he is working on a project with the Italian government on testing um, an online blockchain based voting system that runs on the Monero network. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Yeah, good morning. How's good it going? Morning. You guys want to quickly each uh, introduce yourselves? Yeah, no, uh, thanks for the invitation. First, first and foremost, my name is Vincenzo Di Nicola. Hi, I'm Calogero. And uh, I'm Raffaele Nicodemo. Yeah, thanks for coming on, guys. So um, when we saw this post on Reddit, uh, I guess it was about a week ago, uh, the community got pretty excited about it. But uh, the Monero community, being what it is, is always a little skeptical. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we are excited. Uh, we definitely want to learn more and, and learn about how real this actually is. So what exactly are you guys doing? What stage are you at? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if any if any of you wants to jump in and, and take the mic, go for it. Yeah. So no, first and foremost, I mean, uh, thanks. Uh, just want to correct a few things. So um, at the end of this um, conversation, hopefully we're going to clarify what we're doing and what we plan to do. So on uh, that was uh, three weeks ago, March 10, if I remember correctly. Yes, here, uh, in, yeah, uh, March 10th. Um, here in Milan, we showcased a proof of concept that allows people uh, to vote on, uh, on questions uh, through uh, Monero technology. So what we did was this, uh, people, uh, let, me, uh, let me step back a second. Uh, here in Italy, the political system is quite different than the US. So I mean, I guess that most of the people listening are from the United States, uh, where there are usually two parties. In Italy, it's different, there are multiple parties. And currently, the party which has the majority uh, in the government, it's called the Movimento Cinque Stelle, Five Star Movement. And um, they, are new, they are a new party. They are very strong believers in direct democracy. And uh, on their portal, which is called Russo, they very often ask uh, questions to their, um, um, uh, to their base, like, uh, what do you think about this? Should we do this or that? Uh, do you think our uh, candidate has done the right thing or not? So they use their portal, which is called Rousseau, very often uh, to ask feedback uh, to the user, to the voter base. So that's, it's like, uh, it's unusual. I mean, I don't know other parties in the world. They make extensive use of uh, a portal to collect feedback from um, uh, the voters. Now, the problem is this, that uh, like any voting system, uh, I mean, this or any other, like uh, reality show, when you vote for some contest or reality shows or whatever, there is always like a problem that you never know if your vote has been recorded correctly. You never know if anybody who is in charge of the system is changing the vote. You never know uh, that, uh, I mean, your anonymity is preserved. Actually, it's very, very likely that whatever vote you cast in a central system, uh, uh, it's likely that your anonymity is not preserved. And uh, of course, I mean, you're also exposed to hacking attacks, so like uh, external attackers can go and can try to manipulate the vote. So there are a number of issues in uh, online voting uh, that, um, I mean, uh, that diminish uh, the, um, the potential of such systems. So since this is very important for this party, the Festa movement, they are thinking about a way to like uh, make things more resistant, more uh, trustworthy and anonymous. And, and I believe this is also something that um, a candidate in the US, I mean, uh, I think Andrew Yang is thinking of for uh, uh, voting. Like there must be ways to improve ways to, uh, to vote online. I mean, like, uh, of course, with the special caveats, but I mean, uh, the blockchain technology comes at the right moment, at the right place. So we thought, you know what, let's do something. Let's try to showcase a way to uh, take the uh, beauty of Monero, like the strengths of Monero, and uh, uh, apply in the online voting. By the way, this didn't come, this idea didn't come from us. I mean, we actually read this paper by uh, uh, Suzuki and Fujisaki in 2007 about traceable ring signatures. And they were actually talking about uh, um, ring signatures for voting. 
And uh, this is actually a concept that's been, uh, introduced, that's been applied in Monero. So for us, it was actually the right technology to use. Mm. So this is just to give you like uh, a preamble, uh, um, like um, a sort of uh, pre-overview. Okay. Yeah, no, very good. Um, actually, I worked on a years ago, uh, I guess this is maybe, uh, this is, this is maybe 2009. It was, it was very, very early stages of when, uh, Bitcoin was coming out. I had not even heard about it. Actually, this is when I ended up first hearing about it. Uh, I worked on a project called gov together, uh, in New York. And basically the concept was we were trying to similarly improve, uh, representative democracy by allowing constituents to vote on issues individually and mm -hmm. uh, those votes would get passed on to a representative who would then uh you know vote in the legislature uh it, it relevant to how the you know how his constituents voted online so kind mm -hmm. of a way not not doing direct democracy through uh letting people vote directly on issues but letting uh people essentially poll on issues and then having a legislator pledge to uh to abide by what that poll the results of that poll so this mm -hmm. is similar to what what kind of the what the goal is there it's not that people are going to be using this to vote uh directly on the issues in kind of a referendum form that the government accepts but more so uh these votes would be a poll that's passed on to an elected official is that it depends i mean so here if you're just like in the very early stage we want to see how far we can go we want to understand the the, the strengths and the limitation of such system mm -hmm. and see where it can be applied i mean personally we believe that um, um, this sort of system like ours or like uh, similar systems are much much stronger they provide much much higher uh, reliability guarantees that centralized voting systems of course, it needs to be tested. It needs to do. We need to do like a very thorough experimentation, and then let's see, you know, how far we can go. I mean, like, uh, I mean, I don't want to put limit. So, what was what was the test that you guys did? What was the pilot that you guys did? So again, like a proof of concept, very super early stage, you know, just to show that things can be done. So it was a simple. Um, during an hour, during this, um, uh, if there was an event of uh, um, Rousseau, this um, uh, platform linked to the, the political party. Uh, 67 people during uh, one hour came and downloaded a voting application that we based on uh, Monero, Monero Jean. By the way, I mean, we're very thankful for it's a great technology. And um, they were able to vote for four different choices, like what they wanted to eat at lunch. Like uh, the choices were pizza, uh, oranges, uh, sweet, uh, and uh, what was the last one? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Candies, okay. something like that. So I mean, oh, I mean, of course, I mean, like a sim simple, like uh, Italian way of voting, like <laughs> food related. And uh, as you can imagine, pizza was actually the winner. But I mean, uh, it was like a, a proof of concept. I mean, like, um, and it was good that during that hour, uh, sixty-seven people actually uh, used the app. Fifty-three voted. And uh, I think like 30 voted for pizza, 16 voted for oranges and so on and so forth. So we were able to um, showcase a way to allow people to vote for something. In this case, were, were objects, they were food. It could have been a, anything, a, a simple way. The good thing is this, that nobody in the system were able to, we, nobody could understand what each person had voted for. So this is actually the beauty. Also, the important thing that we want to stress, because this is linked to like uh, of the way voting are done, we knew how many ballots, so at the very beginning, so let me start, I know there are a number of concepts to discuss, so I mean, sorry if I'm confusing, but at the very beginning, um, we, dis we divide the system in a different number of entities. For example, there is an administrator, which is able to provide the right to vote, like tokens to voters. So at the very beginning, the administrator created, uh, let's say, 67 tokens before the voting started. What happens is this, uh, when the vote starts, um, the administrator gives one token to each single voter. So there is a way so that, I mean, every single voter, potential voter, receives a token. With that token, the voter at the point can cast their vote to uh, a vote receiver. In this case, could have been pizza, oranges, whatever. So these are the three main entities in the system, administrator that gives votes, voters, and vote receivers. 
So this was the part of the um, proof of concept. Um, I mean, of course, there, may, there must be, the, the, we need to have improvements. Uh, uh, I mean, we can discuss later on. But the concept is this, you know, many votes are in the systems. In the system, you know, uh, the voters, uh, you don't know what the voters voted for. And at the end of the voting session, you can count number of votes that uh, each vote receiver has received without knowing where the, voted, the votes came from. Right. And, and the person that voted can validate that their own vote was essentially counted and tallied, right? Okay. They, they could see that their vote went through. Yes. So this is, a, like, this is a, one of the things to, uh, they, there are pros and cons in this. The pro is this, that the person knows that the vote has been recorded, that the vote has been counted. I mean, there is, uh, this is actually very important because uh, not current uh, uh, digital voting system don't give you this uh, guarantee. Uh, and in our system, you have this guarantee. You can, you know that your vote has been cast and has been recorded correctly. Now, uh, there are a number of uh, things that, uh, uh, I mean, uh, again, this is a proof of concept. So there are a number of things that need to be improved. For example, um, um, which you need to be sure that you voted for the right uh, vote receiver. Like, uh, uh, how do you know that I'm voting, I'm voting for pizza and not for oranges? I mean, uh, uh, if you download that information from a remote, a remote server, of course, an attacker might uh, switch uh, the information and you believe you voted for something instead of you voted for something else. So, and in this case, I mean, uh, something like open alias uh, uh, would come in handy so that you can uh, uh, rely on a different technology to allow people to vote, to, to, uh, to manually write something that is human intelligible and uh, be sure that uh, no hack uh, was done in the meantime. Or you need to like type the address of the receiver like uh, on your uh, on on your wallet. So this is one of the things that um, needs to be improved. Um, yeah, go ahead, please. It, so you guys built it. You guys built this technology. Who who was it that actually built it? Was it uh, Calogero and Raffaele? The built Calogero. If you want to chime in, Raffaele. Yeah. Uh, what we did, uh, we just forked the code of Monero and Monerujo at the time. And we just applied a few uh, few uh, with few changes on the code, and uh, like removing the fees uh, and something like that, uh, some checks, uh, and that's it. There is still a lot of to, of the work to do. So does it does it run on top of the existing Monero network, or it's its own network? It is. It is. No, no, no. It is not running on top. Like uh, it, it, the code base is Monero with some. Uh, Modica modification, but it's a private uh, blockchain. Okay, okay, I got you. Okay. So, so the problem is this: that we want to run, we we love to run on the on the Monero network on the permissionless permi permissionless blockchain. Uh, in the real world, there are two, two problems. So one, uh, I mean, I come from the Bitcoin world, and I'm still uh, burnt by a year and a half ago where uh, uh, the network was super congested and you had no clue that your transaction was going through. Like, I don't know if you remember, but I do, that one, a transaction of mine took 10 days to get confirmed. Uh, and this is a problem that uh, it's inherent in public blockchains. You never know when your transaction is gonna be confirmed if the network is congested. Also, the fees, uh, they might skyrocket, and you don't know how much you're going to pay for an election. So, we are very, so for this proof of concept, uh, we used uh, like um, a permission at the blockchain uh, running with um, a custom version of the Monero code. However, uh, we would love to use uh, uh, the Monero network if uh, advancements like uh, Tari, for example, which we are looking uh, very deeply, uh, allow to issue digital assets. So it would be great if there is a technology that allows to issue a digital asset like uh, votes like uh, I'm an entity, I, 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 want, to, I want to create, uh, let's say, 10, 1 million votes. I create it on uh, Trutari on the Monero network, and at that point I can transact. So this is something that we would love to do, but at this time, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, it's not ready in production. So we want to advance in the meantime with uh, like custom technology. Gotcha. So why, uh, why Monero? Why? Go ahead. Sorry, Rafael. So, let me say that uh, we don't want to create a permission at the blockchain, but uh, we uh, we are thinking more about something hybrid between permissionless and permissioned, which there are a number of validators that uh, we usually call sealers that are able to create blocks 
and uh, uh, we imagine a lot of nodes uh, that we call supporters uh, that uh, can check if the blockchain uh, works properly and no one uh, is a malicious node or something like that, but uh, that uh, cannot create uh, blocks. So everyone uh, could run uh, his own uh, supporter node and be sure uh, that validators or sealers uh, are not malicious and uh, are um, recording votes uh, properly. Uh, so that I think is a, a, a good point to be uh, to be explained. Why why did you guys choose Monero or the Monero code base? Why not? There are a number of uh, technology all around the world, uh, a lot of or even other blockchain like Zcash. And uh, why did we choose it? Uh, first of all, a lot of blockchain are being used nowadays for voting. But if you uh, really look into it, uh, in the end of those uh, system, there is a key, a key for audit purpose. And like, for example, in Zcash, where everything is encrypted, you need it because you don't know for sure what's going on. And, uh, and thus, this we didn't like it because we are giving power to someone in the end. Someone has the key. Or even like uh, Zcash uh, with uh, the zero knowledge proof, the DK snacks they have, uh, they have a trusted setup, and we don't like it. Right. So, you, so you like you like the idea that Monero provided this ability to do things privately and anonymously, where you could still audit things, uh, yeah. but without sacrificing um, a, a trusted setup scenario. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the, the, the optional auditability of Monero, I mean, it's wonderful because think about this. Uh, at the beginning, when I said that uh, um, the, the authority gives uh, tokens to voters, uh, this can be like an external auditor or voters themselves uh, through uh, private view keys uh, can check that each voter has, has received one and only one right to vote. So these are beauty of Monero that we have not seen in other technologies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, we are open to everything. Just uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Like, uh, for example, uh, the zero knowledge proof are used on Monero, right? Like the bulletproof, but there is no trusted setup. We got a lot of improvement uh, and so on. So we are, we are open, actually. Just uh, we really would uh, like to have a lot of help. But right so now, it is awesome for us. So, I mean, this obviously takes a lot of work. Um, what what's keeping you guys going are you guys funded or uh are you working with uh groups that are, are giving you funding is it coming from the government or is no. this just you guys are just toiling away on your own no this this was a uh, this project this proof of concept uh, uh, was sponsored by uh associate from the russo platform so they paid to have a proof of concept so great i mean uh, we showed that everything is possible now the question is uh, if uh, um, if and how to move forward. If because depend for us it's uh, I mean a project like this can be can be it's important that to get applied into such a, a platform that like, to allow the voters to vote and to improve their system, which uh, I mean through this technology can be like uh, enhanced. Uh, it's not a, in, in, it's not our decision. Uh, to um, to develop or not uh, uh, this project, it, it's up to them to decide if they want to move forward or not. In the, in the meantime, uh, we are um, working on a document where we want to describe the system that we've done, the potential improvements, uh, and we're also reaching out to community to get feedback. Uh, for us, it's very important because, as you can imagine, it's a very very delicate project. It's um, I mean, here we're talking about with. Thinking, we are talking about the uh, the tip of the iceberg. There is a lot of things that needs to be done underneath. Uh, we got feedback by a number of different people. I mean, for example, uh, I want, we want to thank uh, Sarang uh, that gave us some feedback, and other uh, people who don't want to be mentioned. Uh, and we would like to. I mean, uh, it's uh, we want also to reach out to the community uh, to ask for feedback. I mean, if they want to read our document. Uh, and uh, tell us uh, what they like, what they don't, uh, how can be improved, it would be great. Because, I mean, the potential here is uh, to further uh, improve it and uh, to develop a real production system. Again, uh, uh, it's far away.
it, uh, it's not today, but who knows? I mean, like it depends on also on the will of uh, the political the political party. Mm -hmm. So, is, it, was it all open source? Can all the code be found on, on on GitHub or something? Is it all accessible and open source? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so it, yeah, it's on GitHub. Uh, yeah, like uh, it's in Italian, so I think it's better if I tap it. But it's uh, Associazione Russo, so I just tap it. Uh, mm. in there. Okay. Uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see where this goes. Do you envision maybe, I don't know, uh, the Monero community potentially uh, testing it as well, maybe just for, for polling in their own, you know, for our, uh, our own, you know, internal polling you know, if, if, if we're trying to make a decision as a community uh things mm -hmm. we can vote on well i mean uh, i mean i think i mean we're open to anything and uh, by the way we want to just uh, uh, show a way to do it uh, if there are other people who have a different implementation i mean uh, we're very willing to help uh, on uh, on their side uh like i said here it's in the early stage uh if the code i mean it's uh, i mean what we've done is relatively simple like uh but we we dig down into potential issues that uh, uh needs to be like uh, further explained so i mean we're open to any solution in this mm -hmm. stage. yeah i mean in terms of the concept in general obviously there's there's always a lot of criticism about whether or not it can be done even if the the blockchain technology exists um uh, for reasons that, you know, if you have online voting, uh, then maybe people would start selling their votes, right? So if they're not going to a polling yeah. place, they would, well, they, would um, they would sell their vote. Uh, and I guess also the concept of, well, who's who's managing this anyway, right? So you, like you said, you mm -hmm. had an issue or somebody has to actually issue, I mm -hmm. guess, the keys that, that gives people the right to have one vote per person, but you have an issuer there. Can that person be, tr is there a trust issue there? Or is mm -hmm. it just that people are validating their own votes so that trust well, issue doesn't matter? Well, we so can look each, each of those uh, issues you just said right now, like not like extensive talk, but we can uh, like uh, take all each one of them right now. Yeah. Sure. So, for example, like uh, the one dimension, like uh, the authority. I mean, in a voting session, there is always an authority. Like uh, there is always like somebody needs to give you the right to vote. Like uh, it could be the state, like in a normal election. In this case, like uh, an association, whatever, like who, there must be always a certain entity that gives you the right to vote. Uh, and in this case, uh, it's even better because anybody through private duties can check if uh, voters receive one and only one right to vote. Like, so this is, I mean, this is, can be easily solved. Uh, and it's actually, it, it is solved. The problem of vote buying, it's different. It's actually trickier because you're right, like uh, people could actually try to sell the vote. I mean, the beauty is this, that you know that your vote has been cast and has been recorded correctly. Wonderful. At the same time, you can actually show this to somebody else and say, look, I mean, I did it. Uh, now, the, the way to somehow mitigate it, uh, it's either to allow the person to later invalidate the vote, or even better to be able to cast the vote again. If you allow the person to vote and vote and vote and vote, and only the last vote is the one being actually counted, at that point you uh, drastically reduce the concerns of vote buying. Now, in our uh, um, employment- can you, can you explain that? What do you mean? So the person would always be able to change their vote essentially yeah. at the end? Yeah, so like the thing about this in uh, Estonia, they don't have like a blockchain based solution, but I mean, they allow people to vote remotely and um, they allow people to vote multiple times during the voting session. I mean, uh, you can vote and only the last vote is what it counts. So the previous votes are being like cancelled. So if you like introduce a sort of concept of repeated voting, I mean, it drastically reduces the, the possibility of vote buying because uh, Technically, you can show the buyer, the vote buyer, look, I voted for this person, but then, I mean, you vote again. Again, how to do it in, uh, in Monero or in any blockchain technology? One, I mean, you need to have multiple votes. Uh, you need to introduce a concept of uh, somehow canceling a vote and reissuing the vote. So it's not trivial. Um, I mean, again, this is something that we're open to suggestions. In our document, uh, we introduce a concept of easier vote invalidation, which is uh, you voted for somebody, you can uh, prove yourself that you voted, or you can actually even sell the vote if, you, if you're dishonest. 
but there is also a way to invalidate your vote. So we introduced sort of like a notion of vote invalidation in our improvement document. Again, it would be ideal to allow the person to vote again. Uh, now, maybe I'm talking about a little bit of uh, maybe uh, impossible things, but if there is a way to introduce a notion of smart on private smart contract uh, in such technology, that uh, maybe would solve the problem. So this is the kind of feedback that we're looking for, like because vote buying is an important issue. Personally, we believe that uh, it, with the right uh, mindset and with the right like thinking, it can be solved. But we're far away from it right now. Uh, we have a lot of issues with uh, like because in Italy it's a real problem. Like a briber can pay you for your vote. So what can I ask you? What can the briber ask to you? Like uh, can I ask you the vote? Can I ask you the seed? Like uh, the seed of uh, your wallet, it can like uh, we have a lot of scenarios, so we have a lot of ideas, but we need to work on it. It's not it's not easy, but uh, we know there is a problem, and we know right now the solution can be used for uh, like uh, for uh, yeah for subject which are not really important because uh, otherwise the the briber will come up and say okay. You know what? I pay you, or either I'll kill you. That's just <laughs> it can happen, and we don't want that. So we are really going slowly. And well, the, the goal of the goal of system is to prove that things uh, through this way are better than the current voting system. There are plenty of remote voting systems right now that are used in real life. Like for example, in Italy. Uh, Italians vote abroad and there is a lot of uh, it, it's very costly very inefficient uh, and there is lots of like uh, fraudulent activity there system like this like our uh, drastically reduce cost uh, drastically improve productivity and also uh, even cut like concerns so we don't want um, our goal is not to say look I mean uh, um, both voting systems can be replaced by this we want to tell look I mean wherever there is a, a remote voting system that is in place uh, there are better ways to do it, and uh, the way that we approach it uh, is one of the best way. So, how did, how did you guys all get involved in this? Was it uh, are you guys all coming from this political party in Italy that is interested in direct democracy, or were you coming from the Bitcoin blockchain world and got no, involved? No, I mean, I come, I come, I mean, I mean, I come yeah. from a technological background. I mean, I got my master's in computer science from Stanford. I lived in the United States for enough, for ten years. And when I came back to Italy, I built this startup um, that allows people to easily buy, sell, and do safe custody of Bitcoin. So cryptocurrency and computer science is my background. Um, yeah, go, Rafael. Uh, okay, well, me and uh, Calogero, we created a, a startup. Uh, we are a very young startup, and we are uh, focused on the blockchain technologies. Uh, we have worked on blockchain uh, uh, since uh, almost two years uh, and we started from Bitcoin and Ethereum like all people, uh, like uh, everybody done, but uh, uh, last year uh, we uh, started studying Monero and we fell in love with uh, this technology uh, and uh, in the same time we had in Italy the political selection and uh, studying Monero and analyzing uh, uh, politics uh, requirement uh, we saw uh, that Monero features uh, fit almost perfectly with the uh, politics requirement. So we start thinking about the uh, digital voting system based on Monero. And uh, so we are now working, uh, uh, and we hope to go ahead to work with the Monero technology. So we all come from technical backgrounds. I mean, for us, I mean, politics, uh, I mean, technology has no political connotation. I mean, like a technology can be applied uh, to, if it improves lives, I mean, why not? I mean, there is no really technology, there is no political color associated with technology. And uh, I mean, personally, we believe that in 2019, uh, there must be better ways to do uh, remote voting uh, wherever it is allowed. What do you guys think about, so, because I guess, like you were saying, um, one of the, the kind of the, the ethics of this political party is that they believe that uh, democracy should be more direct. Mm -hmm. um, what do you guys, what do you guys personally believe about that? I mean, do you, do you think direct democracy? Obviously, I guess you think it's a step in the right direction. Do you see there potentially being faults with the the concept in general? 
Uh, mm -hmm. I know like in America, you know, uh, this country is, is, you know, a democratic republic. So the idea is that uh, ultimately, ultimately you're leaving it up to representatives to make the choice for you. And there, there's reasons why that system was put in place because uh, one of them being it kind of protects uh, minority opinion, right? So uh, a direct democracy potentially allows for mob rule, right? So mm -hmm. if everybody has the power to vote individually, uh, do things get ruled by the mob versus uh, you know being ruled by a democratic republic? Just curious if you guys have a, a point of view there in terms of like the political science aspect to it. Mm, I, mean, like, I mean, I will tell you my experience. Uh, I mean, I, I will never forget the moment I came to the United States. It was um, uh, September 2003 in San Diego, in US, California. Two, day, two months afterward, there was this um, recall election. Uh, I know if you're Californian, probably you, rem you, you remember it, where uh, voters were unsatisfied with the governor and they recall the governor and to have another election and uh, Schwarzenegger won in 2003 November if I remember correctly. For me that was a major display of uh, direct democracy where people could actually say you look I mean uh, yeah we voted you before but you did a very terrible job now get out and we have new elections. So again uh, this is a major display of the force of uh, direct democracy. Of course there are cons like the one that you mentioned I mean, there is never black and white. I mean, you need to provide the power to people for important decisions. And um, of course, you cannot, you, you shouldn't abuse of, uh, of the power, but you need to have it in the first place. Rafael, Vincenzo, you got an opinion on that? Well, yeah, no, I, I agree. Okay. Oh, okay. But anyway, I just want to stress out, uh, like right now, how it, like it was just Vincenzo said, right now how it works, if you want to vote in Italy, but you're not in Italy, a mail will arrive somewhere in the world, and who knows if it's uh, the, the right paper, the right ballot paper or not. Most of the time it will arrive half empty, and then you have to sign where? Where you have to sign? In, in mountains, where do you have to sign? We, we don't know. And then you have to close it and send it back, like a, a thousand of miles, and then you to reach Italy again. Do you think this is a reliable system? I'm sure there must be some better ways. So for this issue, yeah, we can totally think uh, to apply Monero or whatever. Some other system which uh, you are voting some, for some more serious stuff, then we must think about your freedom, the, which whatever the vote is personal, uh, whatever you like it, uh, and some other issues like your identity. Okay, there is a lot of issue with that. The, the identity being linked with your vote, uh, that's the main issue. But still, should we first we should solve the little small problem we can solve, and then we can also apply. And there is a lot of research and math, a lot of math to do it. So also to add on that, like uh, if you think about this, like uh, now people say, oh, you shouldn't do uh, digital voting, uh, it's impossible, and so on and so forth. Well, if you look about this, like 10 years ago, people would say like uh, even the digital cash was impossible to create. Like five years ago, like people said, you know, you cannot issue tokens. Like uh, technology goes forward. Like uh, we want to uh, we want to expand. Like we want to push forward. Like uh, the boundaries of knowledge and see what can be built. Of course, it needs to be tested. And if you see that it's better than what we had before, yes, let's use it. So what would be the next steps with you guys? So you, you guys ran this test pilot. Uh, ideally, what would be uh, the next step? Well, ideally, it would be like if political party wants to move forward with the project, we, we go ahead. At the same time, uh, if they don't, because I mean, uh, maybe they have other um, um, priorities, I mean, uh, we're willing like to work like uh, like uh, under the radar for a while and uh, to get feedback on the. And by the way, we also always want to have feedback. Maybe to have it uh, like um, a collective project where people like can contribute, like uh, and work for the best. And if the political party did move forward with it, they would use it. What what would you see as being their first use case? Then it would be like one elected official would use this to to poll his constituents. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, usually what they do is uh, they ask questions like, uh, I mean, a question like, uh, did this, um, uh, did our uh, like uh, member of parliament did good or not? I mean, do you think we should do this or this? Like uh, this sort of questions, they do it very often. And this is actually a good use case, like uh, to test uh, the system. Uh, eventually, they can even run primaries. Uh, I mean, uh, on the, on the system, like uh, you allow you ask voters to say, "Look, there are a number of candidates. Uh, tell us uh, which one you like the most, uh, so that eventually they can run for uh, like uh, uh, real uh, physical uh, booth elections." Like mm -hmm. uh, primaries is maybe maybe it's such a good use case because a uh, number of parties they do it all, all over the world. Uh, and they are uh, quite uh, like, uh, I don't want to say squishy squash, but I mean, uh, they, they are not like super sophisticated. And this system actually can bring uh, plenty of certainty in a primary. So that'd be interesting. So primary for this political party would potentially be run through the system. How would yeah, they... I cannot, I can, by the way, just a, a disclaimer, I cannot speak for the political party. Like here, oh, I'm just, I okay. mean, like, we have like, we just, working on uh, the project uh, we we cannot like speak for uh, on the political side i'm just suggesting what it can be done i mean this is just my suggestions uh, but i feel it's like what they like to do also how would you how would you envision that being managed so like we said so now we have this kind of this meat space problem of how do you get uh people the the you know the private keys that they need that are associated with their vote how would that be managed how would you envision that being managed Okay, so the, the one thing that we you know, mentioned is, is that we did not uh, address the identity. So the identity, it's a major important piece that um, uh, we left aside. Like um, digital identity, it's per se, it's an important topic. And we know that there are a number of solutions already in place. And we want to do, we want to take these solutions and integrate into the system. So that you know that, I don't know, like uh, Calogero is Calogero and uh, has a key and uh, something happens. So once a digital identity is established, then you can allow the person to vote. And at the point, the, the system will, that we designed actually um, take place. Uh, like I said, like there are a number of different entities. There is the, uh, the authority, there is the voter, there is the vote receiver. There must be an auditor, of course. Uh, it, it would actually be the entire voting com in community that checks if uh, everybody receives one vote. And at the end of the voting session, you want to be sure that uh, each candidate, you want to count the number of votes of each candidate. So you want to disclose the private keys of the candidate. There must be also, and this is important, that uh, I don't think it can be solved by Monero itself or by any blockchain technology. You must prevent uh, um, a vote receiver to know in real time uh, the voting trend. So let's say that, uh, of course, I mean, I, am, uh, I have my private keys and uh, a voting session take place, uh, I would know in real time uh, how many votes I'm receiving. This cannot be allowed. You, mean, you cannot like uh, leak informations like uh, voting trends. So at the very beginning, of course, as an improvement, uh, you need to have uh, a safe custody and creation of uh, uh, private keys of uh, the vote receivers. So, and by the way, custody technologies, uh, they are uh, very well known right now in the cryptocurrency space. Like, uh, I mean, my company, Conio, we do it. Other companies also work on custody solutions. So this is something that can be taken and introduced into the system. And so that you uh, prevent anybody from knowing in real time how many votes they are receiving. At the end of the elections, at the end of the vote session, you recombine the keys and you show them to the world and everybody can see how many votes each vote receiver has received. So there are a number of different uh, little things uh, that uh, you need to consider uh, and we thought about uh, again uh, we brought in a document uh, we're listing all the possible improvements uh, but of course uh, there, i mean uh, we are only three people uh, maybe there are things that we have not thought about and that's why we want to reach out and see what people think all right uh yeah definitely uh, keep the monero community updated uh anything we you know they could check out uh in terms of this doc this document you're talking so the document's complete or you're working on the document uh, we are um, we are, we, are um, we have given the document to a few people we are waiting for feedback uh when we we can publish it like probably in uh, next week or next few days mm. but we would like first to get like uh, informal feedback uh, uh, before like publishing it, like just to be sure that uh, our ideas are validated. So, how about in, in, you know before we go, maybe we just talk a little bit in general. How's how's the crypto scene in Italy in general? Uh, wh what does it look like? Is are a lot of people working on uh, 
blockchain projects? Is Monero <laughs> popular in Italy? Do you guys mm -hmm. have any uh, comments there on kind of the pulse of crypto in Italy? Well, I'm sure Monero will get more popular now, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, the future is uh, anonymous cryptocurrencies. As you said for me, Rafael, and I think for Vincenzo too. Mm -hmm. You yeah, guys, so you guys all share that opinion? No, go ahead. No, I, till now, uh, probably almost only uh, Bitcoin is popular in Italy in the, in the, in the, the most part of the population. But uh, we, we, we uh, as Calogero said, we uh, think anonymous blockchain is the future. Uh, the future. So, uh, with our project, uh, probably uh, blockchains like Monero uh, will become more popular also in Italy. And in Italy, uh, till now, there is a lot of uh, uh, media, uh, media are talking a, a lot about uh, blockchain. And uh, so we, uh, we, we hope that our project uh, become popular and a lot of people uh, uh, support us and support the Monero community that uh, we love. Mm. So I want to add one thing. I mean, like personally, I run, uh, I mean, again, uh, here I'm offering my services because on this project, on what, because it's very cool. It's something that can be like a change the life of the, I mean, I, mean, I don't want to sound like maybe too enthusiastic, but I mean, it could actually be change, the life, can be a life changer. I mean, it can change probably the way people approach voting. But I mean, uh, my real work is this, I run a startup, uh, it's called Conio. In, um, uh, that allows people to buy, sell, and have safe custody of cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin. We've been funded by the Italian Postal Service, which I know for an American doesn't sound too sexy, but the Italian Postal Service is not like the USPS. The Italian Postal Service is by far the biggest bank in Italy. It's, I think it's as big as Citibank in terms of assets that they manage, and is like a government uh, uh, bank, the, by far the largest. They invested in us, so they invested into a cryptocurrency startup. Uh, we also work with banks. So in Italy, I can tell you, there is a lot of interest in cryptocurrencies, like uh, from like uh, uh, an institutional point of view. In terms of the consumers, uh, mostly are only interested in Bitcoin. In terms of projects, uh, uh, it's usually only Bitcoin, also because for, I mean, things that I don't like, but I mean, there are a number of maximalists in Italy, which is something I really, to be honest, I don't appreciate. But I mean, uh, there have been like this massive like um, topic say, oh, only Bitcoin and nothing else, which I mean, I need to be honest, I've been very disappointed because uh, like I've been hearing about introducing anonymity to Bitcoin for over three years and nothing has happened. And, um, and then people um, um, point fingers to companies like Neutrino, which is also an Italian company, probably you heard of it, like uh, they are based in Milan, they were acquired by Coinbase. Well, I mean, uh, the thing is, is the Bitcoin technology, I mean, sucks in terms of anonymity. Of course, I mean, companies uh, like Neutrino, Chainalysis, or Elliptic, uh, they take advantage of that. And uh, you cannot, like, uh, finger point to these companies. So finger point to your technology that has not introduced, like, anonymity features into it. And that's why, I mean, I really believe, personally, that Monero is way stronger than Bitcoin. And I really love, I mean, uh, the community that it has. And uh, I mean, whenever it comes to anonymity, I only think about Monero. I mean, because I don't see other project as cool and as sophisticated as Monero. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess uh, it sounds like you guys are on the right track. <laughs> 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 to be fair, the Elements project, okay, with this transaction and a lot of good stuff are there, mm -hmm. but Bitcoin still hasn't taken it. Yeah, yeah. You, you cannot say Bitcoin is a digital cash if you don't address fungibility. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, uh, it's crazy, in my opinion. Right, right. That's what we always stress on, on this show. I mean, I think that's kind of the biggest factor. Uh, it, it, if this stuff isn't fungible, it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really uh, serve its purpose as digital cash. I totally agree. Very interesting, guys. So wait, your, your company, you said, is funded... You know, unrelated to this whole voting thing, you're, the company that you have has has been funded by I, can, it, the Postal the, Service? Yeah, the Italian Postal Service. I know it sounds like a little bit weird, but I mean, actually, in Europe, uh, the, the Postal Service, is, they are actually the biggest banks. In Italy, mm -hmm. the Postal Service, Post Italiana, it's by far the largest bank. Like, people, everybody has an account with them. And, and what is that company? What, um, what does the company do exactly? It's, uh, so it's a, we it's an exchange? 
No, well, I mean, it's um, a, first and foremost, it's a multi-sig wallet uh, in Bitcoin that allows uh, normal people, we, people without a technical expertise, to buy and sell and have custody, I mean, to safe, uh, have safe custody of uh, Bitcoin. So, of course, behind the scenes, we also allow to buy and sell. I mean, uh, we are tied with exchanges. Uh, we have, um, uh, through our bank, we have uh, a way to um, have people pay, um, buy with credit cards and sell with bank account. But the most important part is not the exchange per se. It's the way that we're able to prevent, to, to have people have their own Bitcoin. So, mm -hmm. unlike Coinbase, when you, are, when you deal with Coinbase or other companies, well, I mean, you hope that Coinbase or these companies, they actually have the Bitcoin. In our case, actually, you as a consumer, you receive your Bitcoin into, into this multi-signature wallet. And uh, of course, we have also a way for people who forget to lose the phone or forget the password, which would be like a major disaster, uh, as you can imagine, if you lose your credentials or your keys. We have a way through multi-signature to allow people to recover the, their, their funds. And this is something that happens like more often than people might realize. I mean, I would say at least 10% of people ask to like, oh, I had an emergency, I forgot my mnemonic, I lost my password, I lost my phone, can you help me out? And we're able to recover the funds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's that's an important part of the ecosystem, uh, people coming up with these solutions for, uh, you know, custody. Um, so is it is actively being used? You guys have customers? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, we're only in Italy though. I mean, again, this is totally separate from the voting project. Uh, mm -hmm. We're only in Italy. Uh, we're working with, I mean, it, it's uh, um, an application that is, um, I mean, uh, it focused on normal people. Of course, if you're a sophisticated uh, engineer or you're really into this space, uh, of course, you have your own ways, I mean, to, uh, to buy, sell and do safe custody. Uh, we want to, I mean, our goal is to have a cryptocurrency be mainstream. So, I mean, this application allows people to understand what Bitcoin, Bitcoin is or looks like. I mean, I know it sounds like a little bit childish, but I mean, we have a way for um, to show that Bitcoins are tangible. With our application, uh, you can uh, check it, uh, you can move your application, you, you can see like uh, uh, money balls, uh, golden money balls in your wallet. Uh, you shake it, you hear the sound. And the people at the point realize uh, that it's actually real money, it's not like uh, virtual money, it's actually real money in your wallet, in your hands. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we only have it in Italy because I mean, when you deal with cryptocurrency, whenever you go to a different country, there are different regulations, there are different rules. Uh, and you need to be very, very careful. I mean, otherwise your app, your application will be like suspended from the from the store. Mm -hmm. So are, are you guys considering uh, coming up with a similar solution for Monero as well? <laughs> the, the, the <laughs> I am thinking about it. Well, you don't work in my company, so. Me and Calogero, we, we don't work with the Kona, it's, it's uh, the Bitcoin wallet of uh, Vincenzo. Uh, but probably we are thinking about uh, to develop uh, uh, our new Monero wallet, um, but uh, it's just an idea until now. Okay. okay we will we'll see. But, si but to similarly try to solve this custody issue, we're using multisig? Uh, uh, yeah. Probably using the... Even for other issues like this one, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so by the way, this is totally related, but the way I need to be honest, I mean, I like the way the multi signature has been implemented in Bitcoin uh, way better than in Monero. I mean, I know that uh, in Monero, multi signature is more like an afterthought. I mean, I don't want to sound like uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I mean, uh, I feel it could have been done a little bit better. And of course, I know that there are privacy concerns and so on and so forth, but in Bitcoin, it's like uh, wonderful. So that's actually something where Bitcoin you know, shines better than Monero. It's in uh, multi signature. Mm -hmm. All right, gentlemen. Um, you guys have got anything else? No, I mean, uh, we, we would love. I mean, Thank like, you for this opportunity. <laughs> no, well, of course. But I mean, I would like also to like uh, stress again that uh, as much feedback as we can get from the community would be great for us. I mean, I also believe it can be great for the community. We'll also, again, this is just a, start, a starting point. I believe that uh, either this party or other parties, like, I mean, you, you hear it, like uh, Andrew Yang, the United States, uh, has uh, stated that uh, digital voting is one of his key points in his program. And I believe it's going to happen more and more, uh, uh, it's going to be more prominent in the future. So I really would love that the technology like Monero is going to be the one used for this sort of topic. 
Of course, I mean, if there are uh, improvements in the Monero network, like uh, Trutari, that allows to, you to issue digital assets on the Monero uh, uh, blockchain, permissionless, I mean, would be wonderful. So again, this is just a starting point. Uh, I mean, and I hope it's going to be the beginning of like a wonderful journey. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, like I said, uh, yes, definitely. Please do keep everybody updated. Uh, look forward to reading more about it on Reddit as you guys progress. Yeah, well, and, we, don't, uh, we don't use Reddit too much, but okay. Oh. Well, that, that's where you should be. I mean, that's where uh, you know the the most of the Monero community hangs out. Obviously, you have the developers and everybody hanging out on IRC. But if you want to communicate kind of with the mm. the, the Monero community at large, that's a really good place yeah. to do it. Okay. Okay. We will. All right. Absolutely. All right, guys. Have a good day. Thanks for coming Thank on. You. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Good Bye. luck. Bye. Ciao. Thanks. Ciao. <laughs>